iconic hot dog topping. Yes, you are right. It is sauerkraut. Tell me about the sauerkraut. You keep saying that it's really easy and I don't believe you. So you have to convince me that this is actually very easy. Yeah. So no, this is like the perfect intro to fermentation for folks. Super easy, super forgiving. RJ's Food Rock Sauerkraut. Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of RJ's Food Rocks. Today we are going back, back, back again to hot diggity dogs. Okay, I know, please don't, please keep watching. <laughs> I know uh, they're not really the most fun, but I feel I am going to make a claim that this is going to be a very interesting episode because I am going to do something that I've never done before, which is ferment my own vegetables. That is right. When you think of hot dog, what weird, not weird, I don't want to say weird, okay? Unique, iconic hot dog topping do you immediately think of? Yes, you are right. It is sauerkraut, honey. We are making sauerkraut today. And when I was sharing that I was going to make different hot dogs from all around the, the world, my friend from college, Derek, actually uh, messaged me and said, hey, if you've ever wanted to learn how to make sauerkraut, let me know. I've been experimenting and doing it for a couple of years now. And I was like, well, who am I to teach people how to make sauerkraut? Let me get an actual kraut expert that can teach you the right way of doing it. I've overlaid his instructions with how I made my first sauerkraut and how that first batch is going. So someone that like it really is interested in like, you know, making your own condiments, making your own stuff like at home, this is gonna be a video that you'd wanna save and uh, watch in the future. So I'm gonna show you my interview with Derek and then we are going to learn how to make sauerkraut. Enjoy. Who knew this is where we would end up reconnecting, talking about cabbage on, it's, on my YouTube channel. It's true. I know. <laughs> the world is funny in that way, but, you know, I'm so glad to be here and excited. And, you know, uh, it just goes to show that food is the great connector, right? Like it, it brought, there you go. brought uh, long distant people back together. So, you know, that that's the thing, right? Like, and love to be doing it over cabbage why not like well, let's <laughs> let's let's talk about some good produce today and what to do with wow it. derek spoken like a true higher ed professional uh, right you. back when i was a little baby freshman in college derek was my like learning community mentor trying to figure out how college worked and he was like hey it's gonna be okay <laughs> it's true it's true go ramblers we're here we're, go we're doing ramblers it. we're here how did you get into sauerkrauting fermenting was this like a like a a pandemic hobby that you developed or was this always something that you've been interested in no so that's a, that's a great question so i got into it probably about a year or two pre-pandemic in the before okay. times um just kind of on a whim so i grew up cooking like you i have strong family influences i worked in a kitchen to put through myself through college so i've always been nice. into food and, and thinking about you know cooking and what to do and you know, like a lot of people, I think I first got introduced to what you can do through fermentation and pickling, things like that, through YouTube, actually. Um, you know, mm. I, I was watching a lot of, of YouTube channels like uh, Bon Appetit, Brad Leone with Bon Appetit, yeah. Joshua Weissman, Binging with Babish, you know, a yep. lot of these things about like, oh, how can I up my game? And I started there like anybody else. And then that kind of led to a rabbit hole that was really interesting because I tried a simple project and it, it mm -hmm. turned out. And then I was like, well, what, how can I keep taking it up and up and up? So uh, I got into it a little beforehand and 
it's it's been a, a passion ever since. It's just a lot of fun, uh, and I find that it tastes way better when you do it yourself because you get to control so many of the variables. You know the yeah. quality of the produce and what's going into it. So way better than anything you're going to find on the shelf. Tell me about the sauerkraut. You keep saying that it's really easy, and I don't believe you. So you have to convince me that this is actually very easy. <laughs> yeah. So no, this is like the perfect intro to fermentation for folks. Super easy. Super forgiving. Um, so yeah, let's kind of talk you through what the recipe is. You're going to start with a three pound head of cabbage uh, and you're going to want to cut that in half and then cut the core out. You know, you make a little triangle in the core and get the core out because it's really hard and bitter and that, that's not really what you're looking for. So get that core out. But once you've got it in half, you're just going to go across uh, crosswise in really thin strips. And you can kind of separate those out and into their little confetti pieces, right, and into a large bowl. And then from there, you're gonna salt your cabbage. You know, good rule of thumb with sauerkraut is 10 grams of salt per pound of cabbage. So for what we're gonna be doing with this half gallon, that's 30 grams of salt. Salt is a, a critical portion of, of how fermentation's magic works, right? Today, I'm recommending like big coarse uh, kosher salt, um, just because these big coarse salt granules are really going to help you draw that moisture out of the cabbage. When you're fermenting, the, the number one tool I recommend that everybody has when they're starting out is a digital kitchen scale to weigh everything, uh, because measuring by weight means consistency. Uh, when you measure by volume, it can be wildly inconsistent in the end product because your salt granules are going to vary by size. So the amount of salt going in one time when you put in a teaspoon versus another teaspoon later, it's going to be a different amount of salt because it's, it's different sizes. So it takes up a, a different variety of the container. Um, but when you do it by weight, you know you're getting the same thing every single time. So a digital scale is, is really the way to go here. Kind of going back to how that translates into the recipe, you're going to take your, your 30 grams of coarse kosher salt and into the bowl with your strips of cabbage uh, take maybe about a third of it and start to kind of massage it in uh, and start really kind of getting that salt like ground in and, and kind of smashed into the cabbage and continue working in batches until you've got all of your salt in and once you've done that really start like crushing down on the cabbage um, you know make good fists and just kind of like punch down into the bowl and really really crush it against the side of the bowl with the salt because what you're trying to do here you're going to notice when you first start you're going to be like boy that's a lot of cabbage it's going to shrink by half by the time that we're, we're putting this into jars and the reason that happens is salt is going to draw the moisture out so as you pound things down uh, it's going to start to give up its liquid so once you've done that and have got a, a good crush going just let it sit on your counter for about half hour and when you come back you're going to start to see a lot of liquid forming at the bottom uh, and how much the cabbage is really starting to, to yield and reduce. So you're going to do it a second time after that 30 minutes. You're going to do the same exact thing and really do another round of, of crushing, crushing, crushing. Uh, it's going to sound like really kind of squeaky sounding. After you do that second round of crushing, that's when you can add in your your spices and aromatics. There are a lot of different ways you can flavor sauerkraut. Um, you know, the way I'm offering this up is just a very traditional way to, to start you out, but you can add whatever aromatics you want. That's the beauty of these things. But what we're recommending for this recipe and in this quantity for a half gallon is a teaspoon of mustard seed, a teaspoon of caraway seed, and then you can crush and finally chop two cloves of fresh garlic. And you can just kind of mix that in with your crushed cabbage and let it sit for another 30 minutes. Once you've done that, you can just add it to your container. Um, so, you know, you really want to pack it down and pack it in. If you have like a wooden tamper, uh, that's a very common tool. A lot of people that ferment will, will buy. You can really kind of crush it down because you want it to submerge in its own brine. Um, its own liquid. So cabbage, everything liquid right from the bowl, right into your container. Uh, if you don't have a tamper, just you can you can do it by hand or you can find some other makeshift heavy item you've got in your kitchen that can kind of get into your jar and really crush it down. Key here at this phase is that you really want to make sure every bit of the vegetable is submerged in liquid. Uh, oxygen is the enemy of fermentation. Um, that's how things are going to turn bad. We talked about safety, right? Like people are concerned, I'm going to get sick. 
oxygen is what does that because that's how you're going to get undesirable yeasts and molds and and fungus and things like that uh, because then it is truly rotting you need the brine to, to preserve the vegetable so it's got to be submerged if you're finding that you didn't get enough brine out of out of the cabbages liquid you can top it off with a two percent salt water brine so you know you can weigh out however much water you think you need and by the water's weight add two percent's worth of that uh in salt and that that should should be enough fermentation creates natural gases and so a lot of fermentation equipment these days, if you, if you get serious about it and kind of build up a collection, they have these lids that have air locks on them so that gas can escape, but oxygen can't get in. Uh, if you don't have that, you need to do something every day when you leave this out called burping. Burping the container is letting that gas out so that it doesn't essentially explode your container. Um, just need to do it once a day. You know, it's really easy. You just unscrew your jar top and, and pop the lid up. And as the fermentation is active, you should start to see after, you know, maybe a day or two, it might sound like as you unscrew it or take the lid off, like you might hear a little pfft, like fizz noise. Um, and you might see some bubbles in your liquid. And that's a really good sign that you have an active fermentation. Ideally, what you're hoping to get is you're going to leave this out on your counter, not in your refrigerator um, for the, the duration of while it's fermenting. Once you're done fermenting, it goes in the refrigerator for storage, but while you're fermenting it and developing it, it just stay out at room temp on a counter. You know, it's just a matter of, of time and letting it do its thing, burping it daily. I have made it, here it is. This is our first ever RJ Food Rock sauerkraut batch. So like following what Derek instructed, we're just gonna let this sit on the counter and then every day I'm gonna let it burp. So I'm gonna open the lid up and making sure that every leaf is under the brine. It was pretty crazy. I truly didn't think there was gonna be enough brine. And as soon as I kind of like pushed the sauerkraut down, there was all that liquid. So I was like, oh, perfect. So here you go. We'll see you in two weeks. If you're having trouble keeping it submerged, a little trick is you can fill a Ziploc baggie with water and drop that right into the headspace and keep it on top so it doesn't rise above the liquid level. That's, that's a little trick as well. One week into our sauerkraut. So I made this August 15th. This today is August 23rd and this is one week with RJ's food rock sauerkraut. I did follow Derek's advice and put a plastic baggie of water on top to weigh it down so that way everything will always be submerged in the brine. So we've done that here. I was hoping to record the Frankfurter episode this week but maybe not because I want to make sure the sauerkraut is per pack. So we'll see you again in another week. Hopefully it'll be ready by then. I am, I'm doing that like long, <laughs> hot dog series where I take this like Food Republic uh, hot dog uh, image and like making every single type right. of hot dog around the world that they posted there. And, you know, really like seeing that obviously sauerkraut and hot dogs kind of go hand in hand. And there's actually four different hot dogs on there that use sauerkraut. There's a New York hot dog, the classic, obviously with sauerkraut mustard and their like onion sauce, that like jammy red sauce that you get at like yeah. hot dog carts in New York. Uh, the Kansas City hot dog also uses it with sauerkraut and melted Swiss cheese. Never had it in my life, so I'm very excited for that. No, kind of me either. Combination. Um, the Chilean hot dog actually also uses sauerkraut with chopped tomatoes, mashed avocado, and mayo which Ooh, <laughs> it's, okay. a, I, it's just a, a, a smorgasbord of different things. And then obviously classic Germany, uh, Frank, of course, served with sauerkraut, a German potato salad and mustard. So sure. I'm excited. Sounds to, delightful. Yeah, I know. I'm excited to 
it was kind of like an inev inevitable thing of like, wow, there's a lot of sauerkraut. I think I'm going to have to make my own. So I, I feel very much like well equipped now. I'm so excited. Thank you for being my like fermenting gateway. <laughs> Happy to do it. Happy to do it. I, you know, I've got my fingers crossed for you. I know this is totally in your wheelhouse. You've got it. This is, this is a great entryway and hopefully gives you some confidence to move on to some other things that have got your, got you excited. Yeah, I know. I'm very excited. Thank you. And I will let you know how they go. I'll send you a updates of how my jars look. can't wait <laughs> thank you so much for watching this episode of rj's food rocks okay so initially my plan was to show you the sauerkraut and then show you the germany dog with the frankfurter and the hot potato salad realizing that the sauerkraut took like all video to make i'm going to show you the germany dog next week because very exciting part of that dish is the hot potato salad which was a recipe that I actually learned last year's quarantine where I was able to unearth some of Adam's family recipes and I found a real authentic German potato salad. So I'm gonna share that with you next week. And then another video after that, we will combine all those other sauerkraut dogs together in one. So you're getting Chilean, you're getting New York push cart hot dog, and you're getting Kansas City. So you are getting like three times as much content from one batch of sauerkraut. So I hope you're excited. If you love the show and you want to show your support, you can follow me on all of your social media at RJ's Food Rocks. Or the best way is to offer up $5 a month on the Patreon. That's patreon.com slash RJ's Food Rocks. You can join all of these lovely people here next to me, all these food rockers. And with them, if you join, you can also get a monthly chance to win a gift just extra content and extra video every week just for you my food rockers and it's just the best way to support and show you think i'm doing an okay job and i deserve five bucks a month <laughs> so thank you again to all of my food rockers and if i know the basics of fermenting i'm really interested in seeing what else i can pickle what else i can make what else i can put in a glass jar because i have three giant glass jars in my kitchen just empty waiting for the next foods experiment so if you have any suggestions please let us know thank you again so much for watching this is rj we will see you next week for some hot potato salad Ooh, tantalizing